Most Def's 1999 song Mathematics is essentially a balanced math equation. The music and lyrics match each other perfectly, and it's not a coincidence. It's simple mathematics. Today, we're diving all the way into the mirrored musical math of this Most Def song, breaking down the samples, recreating the beat, and seeing how DJ Premier's production perfectly matches the lyrics. Do you remember having to balance math equations in school? Like one side of the equation might say two plus two, and then there's an equal sign, and then it might say five minus blank. Once you fill in the blank with the number one, five minus one equals four, which is the same thing as two plus two, right? Both sides of the equation are saying the same thing, but in a different way. On one side of the song mathematics, we have most deaf with the lyrics, and on the other, we have DJ Premier with the music. They're both saying the same thing, but in different ways. This is the perfect metaphor for this song, but don't worry, we'll cover plenty of non-metaphorical, very real math as well. Most Def, who now goes by Yassine Bey, initially wasn't interested in releasing a solo album. He had released a few singles and teamed up with Talib Kweli for the classic album Most Def and Talib Kweli Are Black Star in 1998, but it wasn't until 1999 that we got a proper solo debut with the album Black on Both Sides. On this album, Yassine continues what he started with Black Star, a mix of incredible lyricism, thoughtfully and brilliantly talking about big issues, all mixed with infectious beats that just grab you. This album hit number one on the Billboard Top Rap Albums chart and received wide acclaim from critics. Mathematics in particular is incredible for its lyricism and musicality. This album features many great producers, but Mathematics was produced by DJ Premier, who was unquestionably one of the greatest producers of all time. In addition to his own duo Gangstar, he's worked with artists like KRS-One, Nas, Mop Deep, Branford Marsalis, Biggie, Jay-Z, D'Angelo, Janet Jackson, Rakim, Common, Christina Aguilera, Mac Miller, and so many more that I have to stop listing them or that would just be the rest of the video. What I love about DJ Premier is you hear this song and immediately know it's a Premier beat. He has a distinct style the way he chops and scratches samples, and as we're gonna see, he's not just making a beat that sounds good. He's putting a lot of thought and meaning into it, elevating it to a whole other level. We're gonna look at DJ Premier's work on the main verse of this song, then talk about the lyrics, and then Premier's incredible scratching work on the chorus before for dissecting the entire thing and seeing just how deep the connections go. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's start with the main beat for this song. There are two elements that make up this beat, the chopped up sample and the drums. The sample is from the song Baby I'ma Want You by the Fatback Band from 1972. Let's play the beginning and see if you can hear it. Did you catch it? It kind of sounds similar, but it doesn't at all sound like how mathematics ends up. DJ Premier likes to obscure samples and make them his own, rather than lifting larger sections. This can be heard all throughout his production, including on this song. What he's done is essentially pitched this down and chopped it up to a degree that it's not really recognizable anymore. Then he puts his own drums underneath it and he's got a brand new song going. Let's see if we can recreate what he did with this sample. So what Premier's done is basically taken that beginning part, chopped up the individual notes, and pitched it down. So check it out. It's in a slightly different order than the original and sounds different because it's pitched down, but there's one other thing in there. You hear that? It's some sort of like guitar slide or something. But rather than shy away from that noise, Premier doubles down on it. He plays it extra throughout the track and that's how the whole thing starts. So as far as the main beat is concerned, that's it. It's really simple, really straightforward, and no other deeper layers at all. I'm kidding, it's gonna go so much further. Whenever I use copyrighted music in a video like I just did, that means that YouTube is probably gonna catch it and I can't monetize it. So I'd like to say a quick thank you to Tracklib for sponsoring this video. Tracklib is an online record store for sampling which has a growing catalog of more than 80,000 original songs and multi-tracks to sample with a 100% guarantee of fast, easy, affordable clearance. But let me make something and show you how it actually works. I'm gonna search specifically for something 70s soul. All right, we got a 60s, 70s soul and funk collection. <laughs> Already I'm excited, but you can take it a step further than that before you actually download it. In the browser, I can re-pitch it, I can loop it, and I can add a beat on top of it. So let's see what that would sound like. All right, I'm happy with this. I'm gonna use one of my credits and download it.
All right, I'll keep messing around with this, but when I'm ready to release it, Tracklib makes licensing super easy. Everything in the library is guaranteed for a fast, affordable clearance. If you want to get started yourself, click the sign up link in the description. You'll get 15 tracks to download for free, plus a 30 day trial, which is double the typical trial. Now that we've talked about some of the musical side of this equation, let's talk about what's happening on the lyrical side. But don't worry, there's lots more to talk about musically. In this song, Yassine breaks down many social issues in a mathematical way, citing all kinds of numbers and statistics throughout. He starts out with a seemingly simple idea of listing out numbers in an ascending order, one, two, three, four, but starts to play with them a bit. He does this at the start of both verses, but let's look at the first verse. One for Charlie Hustle, two for Steady Rock, three for the forthcoming live Future Shock. Already, this is amazing. Yassine is starting out with a play on the children's rhyme, one for the money, two for the show, three to get ready, and four to go. This has of course been referenced and reworked many, many other times in lots of other songs, but most is doing it in a new way here. Charlie Hustle is referring to E-40 in his album that would be released about a month after most deaths. Steady Rock is referring to the Rock Steady crew, a group that helped pioneer breakdancing and had a hit song of their own. And then we get to the next line, three for the forthcoming live Future Shock. First off, he's playing with the count here, turning the number four into fourth coming, which hints at something coming later in the song. But what is Future Shock? This could and probably does refer to a few things. There's a book from 1970 with the same name that breaks down a certain psychological state of people and societies that is essentially too much change in too short a period of time. Then there's the Curtis Mayfield song Future Shock from 1973, which talks about injustices the black people were facing at the time. And then there's the 1983 Herbie Hancock album that features not only a cover of the Curtis Mayfield song, but also the song Rocket, which was an incredibly influential song, bringing scratching as a musical art form into the mainstream. So in the first line here, Yassine has already taken us so many different places. E-40's album came out a month after this album, so it's as close to the present as it can be. The Rocksteady crew reference throws it back to their formation in the late 70s, their international hit song from 1983, and lasting significance. Then the Future Shock reference takes us back to 1973 with Curtis Mayfield, which is going to be thematically similar to the rest of this song. Then to 1983 with Herbie Hancock, his song Rocket, and specifically Scratching, while also previewing what's going to happen on the chorus. Viewed this way specifically, Yassine is saying that the forthcoming live Future Shock is going to be some significant live scratching. And that's exactly what DJ Premier does on the chorus. We'll get there in a second. But then referencing the book Future Shock, he's also saying that he's about to bring a lot of change in a short period of time. With a simple count to four, Yassine is taking us from the present to the past and back, previewing what's about to come in the rest of the song lyrically and also musically. Most continues the verse, keeps counting, growing the scope of what he's talking about to not only past, present, and future, but the planets, multiple dimensions, heaven and hell, and the expanding universe. So in other words, he's talking about everything. He's talking about reality itself. Then he continues to demonstrate his lyrical skills as he talks about issues like the prison industrial complex, poverty, violence, national defense, low music industry payouts, the 80s crack epidemic, racial inequality, government surveillance, and problems with public education. And this is just the first verse. He wasn't kidding about that future shock. On the last line of the verse, most says the new math is whipping mother ass. You want to know how to rhyme, you better learn how to add its mathematics. This line, the new math, means multiple things. It can obviously refer to everything he just talked about in the verse, which isn't talked about enough, so would be new to the listener, but he's also referring to the new math curriculum that was introduced in schools in the 1960s, but ultimately failed and was changed because teachers and parents didn't understand it well enough to teach it themselves, and students were too young to understand the concepts. So this new math that he has just listed out is doing the same thing as the new math of the 1960s. Most people aren't able to explain it fully, and the younger generation can't understand it. Then there's the great line, you want to know how to rhyme, you better learn how to add, it's mathematics. He's saying to other younger wannabe MCs, the ones who don't understand the new math, if you want to learn how to rhyme, if you want to say something, something meaningful and important and real, you are surrounded by these numbers and statistics that do not add up. But at the same time, there are so many issues and injustices to talk about that are baked into the system. This is what modern life is built on. If you can see that and understand that and educate yourself with these things, there are plenty of important things to talk about with your music. And don't forget, this is just one half of the equation. And then we get to the hook, which really makes this song like a duet. If Mose is performing the verse, Premier is performing the hook. The main beat continues, but with DJ Premier scratching no less than seven different samples over it. This is another layer of the forthcoming live Future Shock that we were warned about. It's incredible scratching, and played all together, these samples form a whole lyrical chorus. Now, I'm gonna talk about the samples on the chorus, and then we're gonna circle back to the main beat, and then it's gonna get really crazy and really, really mathematical. By the way, Tracklib has made a great video breaking down the use of these samples 
showing the specific phrases with scratches and everything. It's amazing, a quick watch, and I'll link to it in the description. So the first scratch sample on the chorus is the phrase, The Mighty Most Deaf. I've seen it cited as multiple songs, but it's probably from the Most Deaf song, Body Rock, off of Lyricist Lounge, Volume 1. DJ Premier loves to sample an artist's previous work in his production. Next is the phrase, It's Simple Mathematics, which is sampled from the song, John Blaze by Fat Joe. Of course, this is a dream sample since it says the name of the song and came out a year before Most Def's album. So Premier is starting in the present, just like Most did lyrically, scratching Most Def's name and the title of the song from a very recent Fat Joe song. Then the phrase Check It Out is sampled from Look Alive by Big C in 1995. The phrase I Revolve Around Science is from the 1995 Raekwon song Criminology featuring Ghostface Killer. So we're taking it back a few years. Then we get to the line, what are we talking about here? This is from an interview with political activist Angela Davis from 1971. Here's a larger portion of that interview for context. What are we talking about here in terms of blackness? Considering what Most Def just talked about in the first verse, this sample fits perfectly with the theme of the song. Then we get to the phrase, do your math, which is sampled from Erica Badu's 1996 song, On and On, and this is where we start to kick it up into high gear. This Erica Badu song alludes to teachings of the 5% Nation in the lyrics. 5% Nation is a black nationalist movement founded in the 1960s, influenced by Islam, and a lot of rappers are 5 percenters, including Most Def. One set of principles of 5 percenters is supreme mathematics, and some of these concepts are present throughout the song, and makes the whole concept make even more sense. So DJ Premier is sampling the phrase do your math from Erica Badu, a 5%er, which teaches about supreme mathematics in a song called Mathematics by Mos Def, another 5%er. This is not a coincidence, it's completely intentional, and I'll show you why in just a moment, but let's mention the last sample here. The one, two, three, four count is from James Brown's The Funky Drummer, which of course has been sampled many times in many hip hop songs. It's a crucial part of hip hop history. I already made another video about that. But this sample isn't the drums, it's the count off right before the drum break. So Premier is bringing back in a piece of hip hop history, but a different piece than you're used to hearing. So in Moses' first verse, on the lyrical side of this equation, we saw him go from the present back to the past, and even preview what's going to happen in the rest of the song and talk about many different important social issues. That's one side of the equation. DJ Premier then balances out the other side of this equation by essentially saying the same thing, but musically, by sampling and scratching. He starts in the present, goes back a few years, back to an interview with a political activist who talked about many of the same issues as Mos is, up to a modern artist, Erica, who is a 5%er like Mos, which is hinting at supreme mathematics, and then bringing in one of the most sampled songs in hip hop history, but repurposing it to just have the number count off. DJ Premier has talked about this idea of balancing out the music with the lyrics. As he has said, it's all about making a match with what the MC is doing. I'm like a tailor. I can tailor the suit to fit what you want. An artist like Jay-Z will tell me what he wants the song to be before he even comes to the studio. I then make the track and the atmosphere sound the way he wants. Somebody like Guru gives me the titles for the entire album, and I make tracks to that. Other artists may come in with no ideas, they just want a hot premiere beat, so I'll listen to songs I like by them and come up with something that really fits them, so we get a marriage. It can't just be beats and lyrics, it has to be beats and lyrics intertwined, like when you clasp your hands together. He's mentioned in another interview that he's known Most Def for a long time and knew that because Most was bugged out, he had to make a bugged out beat for him. This song, Mathematics, is specifically tailored by DJ Premier for Most Def, and the level of connection between the music and the lyrics is incredible. This is high level art. But do you want to go even further? At the end of the first verse, Yasin alludes to the fact that you're surrounded by all this math that's baked into the system. Well, we're gonna have to rewind because DJ Premier has basically been saying this, musically, since the very beginning of the song. Remember the sample from the Fatback Band that the song is built with? Well, hold on to that as we travel to ancient Greece by way of Donald Duck. I know that's really weird sounding, but stay with me, the payoff here is going to be amazing. There's a Disney cartoon from 1959 called Donald in Math Magic Land. If you haven't seen it, you should check it out. It's an amazing breakdown of math in really interesting ways. In it, Donald Duck is transported back to ancient Greece and shown by the narrator how without math, we wouldn't have music. Look, I could have lied to you and said I know all about Pythagoras and the ancient Greeks and sound all smart and stuff, but I'd rather be honest with you and tell you it was Donald Duck that got me on this. Basically, the narrator explains that Pythagoras discovered that if you take a string and pluck it, you get a note. But then when you divide that exactly in half, it's the same note, an octave higher. But then if you change the fractions in between, changing the length of the string mathematically, you get some other very pleasant sounding notes. 
This is The Narrator Explains how we got scales like the major scale or the pentatonic scale. Mathematically, it's easiest to get to these notes. But you know what, Donald Duck or not, I hate fractions. Let's look at it in an even easier way. When you pluck a string, it's not only vibrating the length of the string, but it's also vibrating in half and thirds and fourths, etc., on down the line, all simultaneously. If you were to pluck a string and gently place your finger on one of these mathematical fraction points, you'd hear a new pitch, a harmonic. Go to the halfway point and you've got an octave. Go to the point one third of the way in and you've got the interval of a perfect fifth, or the first note variation that isn't the root, but is still technically being heard when you play the main note. It's baked in, you might say. Let's just take that, the perfect fifth. You start with, let's say, an A as your root note. Then you go up a fifth, then you get an E. Great, that was a nice sounding interval. Let's go up a fifth again. You get a B. Up another fifth, F sharp. Eh, do it one more time for kicks, C sharp. Now, if we were to put all of those in the same octave, we'd get the following notes. A, B, C sharp, E, and F sharp. This is just another way of getting to the same set of notes as Pythagoras. Regardless of which way you got here, these notes, the root, major second, major third, perfect fifth, and major sixth, or put more simply, the one, two, three, five, and six, make up the major pentatonic scale. Why am I talking about this? Okay, let's stop talking about math. Let's talk about music. Old MacDonald Had a Farm, My Girl by The Temptations, The Crazy Lion in Sir Duke by Stevie Wonder. What do all of these have in common? They're all based on the major pentatonic scale. Our Western ears love these melodies. They're easy to listen to, easy to understand, and easy to sing along with. Now, the pentatonic scale can be found in folk music from all over the world, but in the United States specifically, it's most commonly found now in pop music, rock music before that, which is derived from blues, which is derived from the music of African-American slaves, which is why so many spirituals are based around the pentatonic scale. Hold all of that in your mind, and now let's go back to the main bass line that DJ Premier has made in mathematics. This bass line is based on an A major pentatonic scale. This song is a perfectly balanced mathematical equation. On the lyrical side is most deaf using incredible rhymes and wordplay to talk about the injustices that are baked into the system, part of what modern life is built on, and when you add it all up, it doesn't make sense. On the musical side is DJ Premier scratching and weaving together a bunch of samples on the chorus, covering similar ground, while underneath it all is a beat that uses the pentatonic scale, which is mathematically baked into the core of music and a big part of what modern American music is built on, thanks in large part to African American slaves. And a bonus, the Pythagorean system of fractions isn't directly how modern music is made, because if you keep going with just the math, it starts to sound slightly out of tune. In other words, when you add it all up, it doesn't make sense. Now, did DJ Premier have all of this in mind when he created the beat for Most Def's Mathematics? Maybe not all of this, but he knows and understands all of this because he's an incredible producer who doesn't just create beats. He custom tailors music thematically around what the MC is trying to say. Premier put it perfectly when he said, that's left field, I love that beat, I chopped that shit up lovely. You know, a lot of DJs cut and attach stuff now, but they ain't doing it like me. And that's not even to brag, it's just scientific, it's mathematical. The unbelievable musical skill of DJ Premier perfectly balances with most Def's incredible lyricism, and the result is a perfectly balanced equation. Both sides are saying the same thing in a completely different way. Most Def's solo debut album is in many ways a continuation of what he started on 1998's Most Def and Talib Kweli Are Black Star, but for that story, you're gonna have to watch this video.